Debden Airfield, England, March 1944. Captain Don Gentile stood beside his P-51 Mustang fighter, watching ground crew chief Master Sergeant John Farah supervise refueling operations. Gentile was one of the top American aces in Europe, multiple confirmed victories against German fighters. He understood his aircraft intimately and pushed it to performance limits regularly. The P-51 Mustang was America's best long-range escort fighter. Fast, maneuverable, and with enough range to escort bombers deep into Germany. Powered by the Packard V-1650 Merlin engine, an American-built version of the British Rolls-Royce Merlin, the P-51 could reach 440 miles per hour at altitude and climb to 40,000 feet. But German fighters were evolving. The Focke Wolf FW-190 and Messerschmitt BF-109G were formidable opponents. In level flight, a stock P-51 had marginal speed advantage over the latest German fighters. In combat, marginal advantages determined who lived and who died. American pilots wanted more speed, more climb rate, more power, anything that gave them an edge over German fighters. The Merlin engine was excellent, but it was designed to run on 100-octane aviation fuel, the standard high-performance fuel available to Allied forces. Octane rating measures fuel's resistance to premature detonation, knocking that damages engines. Higher octane fuel allows higher compression ratios and more aggressive engine tuning, producing more power. But you can't just put higher octane fuel in an engine designed for lower octane. The engine management system needs adjustment to take advantage of it. Military aviation fuel in 1944 was standardized at 100 octane for most operations. Some experimental fuels reached 130 octane or even 150 octane, but these were rare, available only for specific test programs and not approved for general combat use. Sergeant Farah had connections. Through informal networks of mechanics and supply personnel, he'd acquired several drums of 150-octane aviation fuel. This was experimental fuel, not approved for operational use, not distributed through normal supply channels. Technically, using it was against regulations. Farah approached Gentile with a proposition. What if they mixed 150-octane fuel with standard 100-octane fuel? The mixture wouldn't be pure 150-octane maybe 115 or 120 octane equivalent, but it would be higher than standard fuel. The Merlin engine might produce more power without the extreme risks of running pure 150 octane. Gentile understood the risks. Unofficial fuel modifications violated regulations. If the engine failed due to improper fuel, Gentile could be grounded or disciplined. If the modification caused an accident, both Gentile and Farah could face serious consequences. But Gentile also understood combat reality. German fighters were shooting down American pilots every day. Any performance advantage, even a small one, improved survival odds. If mixing fuels gave his P-51 even 5 to 10 miles per hour more speed, that could be the difference between escaping a German attack or getting shot down. Gentile agreed to try it. Farah mixed the fuels in Gentile's P-51, approximately 60% standard 100 octane and 40% experimental 150 octane. The resulting mixture was estimated at 115 to 120 octane equivalent. Not extreme enough to cause immediate engine damage, but significantly higher than standard fuel. The Merlin engine supercharger system automatically adjusted boost pressure based on throttle input and altitude. With higher octane fuel, the engine could sustain higher boost pressures without detonation. More boost met more air and fuel into the cylinders, producing more power. Gentile took the modified P-51 up for a test flight. He climbed to 25,000 feet, typical combat altitude, and advanced throttle to maximum power. He watched the airspeed indicator. The P-51 accelerated noticeably faster than usual. Top speed at altitude increased by approximately 8 to 12 miles per hour. Not dramatic, but measurable and tactically significant. More importantly, the engine felt stronger. Acceleration was crisper. Climb rate improved. The P-51 responded more aggressively to throttle inputs. 
The performance increase was small in absolute terms, but noticeable in combat situations where every advantage mattered. Gentile tested the aircraft through various maneuvers, high-speed dives, rapid climbs, combat turns at different altitudes. The engine performed well. No abnormal temperatures, no detonation, no signs of stress beyond normal combat operations. He landed and reported to Farah. It works. The engine's stronger. Speeds up. Climbs better. Keep mixing it. Word spread quickly through the fourth fighter group at Debden. Other pilots asked Farah to mix high-octane fuel for their aircraft. Farah obliged, carefully rationing his limited supply of 150-octane fuel to maximize the number of aircraft that could benefit. Within weeks, most P-51s in the 4th Fighter Group were running Farah's fuel mixture. Pilots reported consistent performance improvements. The group's combat success rate increased. More German fighters destroyed fewer American losses. Some of this was due to pilot skill and tactics, but the fuel modification contributed measurably. The modification remained unofficial and technically unauthorized. Squadron commanders knew about it, but looked the other way. Results mattered more than regulations. If pilots were surviving and completing missions more effectively, commanders weren't going to interfere with whatever mechanical modifications made that possible. Farah's reputation spread beyond the 4th Fighter Group. Mechanics from other units visited Debden, asking about the fuel mixture. Farah shared his method, fuel ratios, handling procedures, engine monitoring protocols. The modification began spreading through other P-51 units in England. By summer 1944, the fuel mixing practice had spread to multiple fighter groups across England. Mechanics who had access to experimental high-octane fuel, whether through official test programs, informal trading networks, or deliberate misappropriation from experimental stocks, were mixing it with standard 100-octane fuel for their squadron's P-51s. The performance benefits were consistent across units. P-51s running 115 to 120 octane fuel mixtures showed 8 to 15 miles per hour higher top speeds, improved climb rates, and better acceleration. In combat against German fighters, these improvements translated to tactical advantages. German pilots began reporting that American P-51s seemed faster than earlier encounters. Luftwaffe intelligence officers were puzzled. The P-51 specifications hadn't changed yet German pilots consistently reported that Mustangs were outrunning their fighters more easily than before. The Germans didn't know about the fuel modifications. Captain Gentile used his fuel-modified P-51 to devastating effect. By April 1944, he'd achieved over 20 confirmed aerial victories. He attributed some of his success to the aircraft's improved performance. In several engagements, the extra speed from the fuel mixture allowed him to catch German fighters that would have escaped a stock P-51. But the unofficial modification couldn't remain secret indefinitely. 8th Air Force headquarters began hearing reports of unauthorized fuel mixing. Technical officers investigated. They discovered that significant numbers of P-51s were running non-standard fuel mixtures without official approval or engineering oversight. The official response was mixed. On one hand, unauthorized modifications violated military regulations and potentially endangered aircraft and pilots. Engines running improper fuel could fail catastrophically. If modified aircraft crashed due to engine problems, the Air Force would face difficult questions about why unauthorized modifications were permitted. On the other hand, the modifications were working. Combat units using fuel mixtures showed improved performance and success rates. Pilots strongly supported the practice. Squadron commanders defended their mechanics. The modifications were producing results. 8th Air Force headquarters issued a directive. All unauthorized fuel modifications must stop immediately. Only official, approved fuels would be used. Mechanics caught mixing fuels would face disciplinary action. The directive was clear and unambiguous. Mechanics and pilots largely ignored it. Farah continued mixing fuels for the 4th Fighter Group. Other mechanics did the same in their units. The practice went underground, more discreet, less openly discussed, but continuing. Commanders continued looking the other way because the results justified the risk. Meanwhile, official channels were pursuing similar improvements through proper procedures. Wright Aeronautical Development Center was testing high-octane fuels for military aviation. Engineers documented that 115 to 130 octane fuels produced measurable performance improvements in Merlin engines when properly managed. 
By late 1944, the military officially approved 115 octane fuel for operational use in P-51s. This was still lower octane than the experimental 150 octane fuel some mechanics had been using, but it was higher than the standard 100 octane. The new fuel was designated 115-145 grade. 115 octane rating for lean mixture operation, 145 octane rating for rich mixture. The official approval of 115 octane fuel vindicated the mechanics who'd been mixing fuels unofficially for months. What had been an unauthorized field modification became standard practice. The military was now providing officially what mechanics like Farah had been creating through improvised mixing. P-51's running official 115 octane fuel showed performance improvements similar to what pilots had experienced with mixed fuels. Higher top speeds, better climb rates, improved acceleration. The Merlin engine's design allowed it to safely utilize higher octane fuel with minimal modifications to engine management systems. German fighter pilots noticed the difference. By late 1944, German fighter reports consistently described P-51s as having superior speed and climb performance. German fighters that had been competitive with early P-51s now struggled to match the improved American fighters. The performance gap widened. Some of this was due to declining German pilot quality. Experienced Luftwaffe pilots were being killed faster than replacements could be trained. But the P-51's improved performance from better fuel contributed significantly. American fighters could engage when advantageous and disengage when disadvantageous, controlling the tempo of air combat. Sergeant Farah's fuel mixing had started as an unauthorized field modification, technically illegal, potentially dangerous, definitely against regulations. But it proved the concept that higher octane fuel could safely improve P-51 performance. The official adoption of 115 octane fuel was a direct result of field experience showing that Merlin engines could handle it. Captain Gentile continued flying combat missions through spring 1944. His final tally reached 23 confirmed aerial victories plus numerous ground victories. He credited his crew chief, Farah, with keeping his aircraft in peak condition and providing every possible performance advantage. The fuel modifications were part of that support. In April 1944, Gentile was grounded after a low-altitude flying incident damaged his P-51. He returned to the United States as a war hero, completed publicity tours, and survived the war. He remained grateful to Farah for the mechanical expertise that had contributed to his combat success. Farah continued serving as crew chief through the end of the war in Europe. He never faced disciplinary action for the unauthorized fuel mixing. By the time official attention focused on the practice, the military was approving similar modifications through proper channels. Farah had simply been ahead of official policy. The story of P-51 fuel mixing illustrated a pattern common in military aviation. Field modifications that violated regulations but improved combat effectiveness were tolerated and eventually adopted officially. Mechanics and pilots on the front lines had direct incentive to find performance improvements. They experimented, tested, and implemented modifications that engineering staffs would eventually validate through formal processes. The practice highlighted tensions between regulatory authority and operational necessity. Military regulations existed for good reasons. Unauthorized modifications could cause accidents, endanger wives, and create maintenance nightmares. But rigid adherence to regulations could prevent beneficial innovations that improved combat effectiveness. Smart commanders navigated this tension by tolerating unofficial modifications that worked while maintaining enough oversight to prevent dangerous practices. The fuel mixing was risky but carefully managed. Mechanics like Farah weren't reckless. They understood engines, monitored performance, and stopped modifications that showed problems. By war's end, American P-51s were running on officially approved high-octane fuel that provided performance improvements mechanics had discovered through unauthorized experimentation months earlier. The illegal fuel mixing had become standard practice, proving that sometimes breaking rules in pursuit of better results led to better official policies. German fighter pilots who faced fuel-modified P-51s in 1944 couldn't understand why American fighters seemed faster than intelligence reports indicated. They didn't know that American mechanics were mixing experimental fuels to extract extra performance from Merlin engines. 
By the time Germany learned about the practice, it was too late. American air superiority was overwhelming. The fuel mixing story became legendary among P-51 pilots and mechanics. It represented the ingenuity and initiative of ground crews who found ways to give their pilots every possible advantage. Sergeant Fair's willingness to bend rules, Captain Gentile's willingness to test unauthorized modifications, and Commander's willingness to look the other way when results justified risks, all contributed to American air superiority in Europe. March 1944 one crew chief started mixing experimental high-octane fuel with standard fuel, giving his pilot's P-51 measurably better performance. Within months, the practice spread through multiple fighter groups. By war's end, it became official policy. What started as one mechanic's illegal modification became the standard that helped American fighters dominate German skies. The P-51 that should have been flying on 100-octane fuel was running on 115 to 120-octane mixture, producing extra speed and climb that German pilots couldn't match. And it started because one sergeant was willing to break regulations to give his pilots an edge.